I suppose today, yeah, Anas, we're going to talk about scientists in general. What we should concentrate on is that there are lots of female scientists in the world and they affected our life a lot. But today, there are some people, they talk about um, Arabs as um, they are not so intellectuals, they are not so pioneers, but we're going to watch a short movie. It is a part of a movie, it's a short video, and it talks about the golden age, where the Arabs were pioneers and so smart at that time, and they had lots of inventions and that inf inventions affected our life today. So, uh, after it, we're going to go through some of the names. I had some of the names um, and some videos for them, but before going to the women, the scientist women or female scientists, we're going to talk about our pioneers in the Arab world. Okay, class, Shh. I'm giving each group of you a different era of history to research. And the question is, what impact did your era have on the modern world? So, Sarah, your group has the ancient Greeks. Ravi, you've got the Romans. And Danny's group gets, ah oh yes, a bit of a challenge for you. You get the Middle Ages. Some even call it the Dark Ages. Boring. Dark. See how you get on. Yes, yes. So, sorry, yes, you get the Middle Ages. Is that the way, Danny? I guess so. How are the Dark Ages going to have anything to do with us? Uh, uh, excuse me. Sorry to bother you. What do you want? Uh, we need to find out what impact the Dark Ages had on the modern world. Never was a period of history so poorly named. Don't touch. It's priceless. And I suppose someone's been filling your head with the usual nonsense, eh? A thousand wasted years. A black hole in history, am I right? Um, yes, yeah, sort of. You see, it's always the same. You assume it was all mud, disease, death and destruction, with marauding mobs of barbarians ripping down the good of former civilizations. Burning and plundering as they went, nothing of any worth invented either, eh? Oh, no, 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 no. Go on, Bill. Sorry to bother you. Come on, it's probably not worth it. Everyone knows that the Greeks and Romans invented everything anyway. Oh, did they now? And you're sure about that, are you? You know, I might just have something for you. You seem to be up to the task. I suppose I could. Follow me. Just the book for you. From darkness into light, my young friend. From ocean onto land, there are things you should know. Oh, yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. Now, I know I left it round here somewhere. Ah! Here it is. Now, 
Take a look. If you dare. Dark Ages, or as it should be known, the Golden Ages. Who are you? I am Al Jazeera. You know Al Jazeera. Engineer and ingenious inventor. Yeah. I thought you said this was the Dark Ages. It doesn't look very dark. That's because it's all a matter of perspective, my soon-to-be illuminated friend. Of course, there are parts of the world that weren't dark at all, but in a civilization that stretched from Spain to China, the golden rays of discovery and invention shone over everything. What civilization? The Muslim civilization, my young friend. Through scholars and scientists of various faiths, some of the most important discoveries known to man were made at this time. <laughs> discoveries that drew on knowledge of the ancients, but have more connections with your modern world than you could possibly ever imagine. Like what? Well. All sorts of things. I've got to get a picture of this. I knew it was a good idea. Who are you? Allow me to introduce Ibn al Haytham, a great scientist whose ideas led to the invention of the camera. You invented the camera? I laid the foundations for modern cameras by explaining how our eyes work. I found a way of projecting an image onto another surface through a small hole in a dark room, later called Camera Obscura. Think of all the things that evolved from this discovery. Cameras, cinema, all share the same principle. Cool. Look out below! Who's that? That's my good friend, Abbas ibn Farnas, who gazed up to the heavens, passionate in his belief that man could fly. Whoa. Indeed, he dared to dream about flying a thousand years before the Wright brothers. You know the Wright brothers. You know, you take your jet-setting holidays for granted, so it only seems fair to remember Abbas ibn Farnas. Stand by. I'm ready for takeoff! <laughs> he did forget one thing. The tail. The tail. Yeah. Is there a doctor in the house? Did someone call? Ah, my a doctor. old friend, why don't you introduce yourself to my young guests? I I'm Abu Qasim al Zahrawi. Zahrawi. Many call me the father of surgery. The did you actually do surgery back then? Surgery. Of course we did. In fact, many of the surgical tools that I invented are still used in your modern hospitals. Hmm? Excuse me, a patient needs my attention. Scalpel! I think I may need some stitches. In that <laughs> case, I'll use cat gut. Cat gut? From the gut of animals. Perfect for stitching up internal wounds. Yes. Your surgeons are still using it today. Mm. Sorry, mustache. Must have it. Who's she? That's Mariam Al Astrolabi, yeah. one of the many brilliant women of her time. She made sophisticated astrolabes. Astro what? Astrolabes. They share the sky and the stars on a small flat plate you can hold in your hand. Think of them as ancient calculating or timekeeping devices. GPS Today nowadays. you have a watch, a compass, satellite navigation, yes. helping people and explorers travel the world. Science at its mm. brilliant best. Nowadays. And all these things were developed during the Golden Ages. Mm. And that's just the tip of the iceberg. There were thousands of other inventions covering all areas of life and in the years that followed their influence spread across the whole of medieval Europe. So you see, 
wasn't so dark after all. What about you? Me? What did you invent? Well, I don't want to be repetitive, but I made some groundbreaking advances in engineering. I suppose my most significant discovery. For you, as engineers. There's a crank and connecting rod. It's essential in pumps and engines. In fact, I've no idea how the industrial revolution could have happened hundreds of years later without such a device. Well, I had to get the credit on it, so. But my crowning glory was my amazing time telling machine. <coughs> my legendary open pocket. It's a clock. Yes. Dozens of components collected from different cultures around the world. Indian, Greek, Arabian, Egyptian, Chinese. Wow. A United Nations clock. <laughs> that is pretty cool. Does it actually tell the time? Wow, yes, of course. If it wasn't for me, thousands of people would be late for everything. Speaking of time, we better get you back. And remember, spread the word. This is a golden age. And I've only shown you a tiny part of this wondrous time. There are countless other scientists and inventions directly connected to your modern world. You're just going to have to find out for yourselves. The light. Yes. I suppose we should be proud for being and uh, for being Arabs. Yeah, so many people, they say, mm, some of the people, they feel shy to say, I am an Arab or something like that nowadays. But at certain ages, we were really pioneers and great. And I hope yeah, in the future or nowadays, we try to change that image. And we must be proud for being an Arab, okay? This is important. So um, this is one of the things I want you to keep in mind that scientists and um, in general scientists are uh, from different backgrounds they are Arabs, international people so um, try to feel that you are uh, um, you had something on the history okay and so many people they feel shy about it do not okay we were talking about um, about uh, the past, but in 1999 there were another Nobel Prize for an Arab scientist. His name is Ahmed Zouel, and I suppose you know the name. So here's the moment when they crowned him and honored him, okay? Nobel Prize. It's nice to see that we had lots of achievements in our life, please. Professor Zouel. I've tried to explain how your pioneering work has fundamentally changed the way scientists view chemical reactions. From being restricted to describe them only in terms of a metaphor, the transition state, we can now see the actual movements of atoms in molecules. We can speak of them in time and space in the same way as we imagine them. They are no longer invisible. May I convey to you my warmest congratulations on behalf of the Royal Swedish Academy of Sciences and ask you to come forward to receive the Nobel Prize in Chemistry of 1999 from the hands of His Majesty the King. So I suppose those are some of the accomplishments we feel so proud for being an Arabs and being part of that event. And it's good to keep it in mind, okay? I know so many people, they say, um, 
we Arabs are not so good, we are late, we are not so pioneer, we are not intellectuals or whatever bad ideas or messages we have in our mind. Please try to keep those bad images uh, or bad messages away from your own mind. We are creative as any other person all over the world. Maybe the others, they have more, let's say, tools than us. That's uh, true. So many people encourage them. It's uh, true. So it's more challenging for us as Arabs, but we should go for it, okay? Inshallah. Let's go to the next one. You have 11 scientists, female scientists in your book. And just, we're going to go through two or three of them. Um, I suppose it's good to know some of the names there. The first one, it is page 63. I don't know which page in yours, maybe 18? 18? No, it's 16. It's page 16. At the bottom of the page, you have exercise I, which says, find out about a famous woman engineer and write an account of her life, her work, and her contribution to engineering. Choose one of the figures from the box if you wish. There are lots of names. It's good to know them. I had some uh, of uh, three or four of them, and I'm going to read some of them to you. So we have Betty Smith Graham was born in Dallas, Texas, to Jess McMurray, an automotive supply company manager. So her father was a manager, automotive um, company manager. And um, Kristen Dovell, her uh, mother's name, she was raised in San Antonio and graduated from uh, Alamo Highest High School. She married uh, Warren Mishmqadiya, yani, to know all those ideas. But you should know that uh, her husband was died through the World War II, uh, the Second World War, and she was left with her children to raise them up. We have some information here in front of you, and here's her picture. And now listen to her talking about her accomplishment in or the invention, okay? I'm Betty Nesbitt, and I was born in Dallas, Texas in 1924. I had a young child to take care of when the war ended. I was a single mother, and I got a job as a secretary. But I was a terrible typist, and they only had typewriters at that time. When IBM came out with this wonderful new carbon select ribbon, I was in hot water because I could not use my eraser anymore. So I went home and created my own little bottle of white stuff and I called it Mistake Out. Well then, when I sold it to Gillette Corporation, of course they changed the name to Liquid Paper. And now Liquid Paper comes in many different forms. I was given um, the amount of $47.9 million in 1979. I left half of my money to my son, Michael Nesbitt, who was one of the Monkees singing group. I died in 1980, and I was only 56 years old. Yes, okay. So she had a good amount of money because of her patent, if you like to call it. Um, she had 47 point million dollar. It's good to keep that in mind. If you have um, those patented, if you have inventions, you should be rewarded with money, okay? Let's go to the next one. We have Marie Curie. I suppose you know the, word, uh, the name Marie Curie. It is so uh, clear to you. She is a Polish. I tried to, uh, to find some of um, the YouTube uh, uh, videos about her. It was in Polish at that time, so you don't understand it. So um, I suppose she was the first woman to win a Nobel Prize, by the way, and she's also the first woman to win, or the first uh, scientist, um, the first person and only woman to win it twice in, in the Nobel Prize. Uh, she had with her family legacy of five Nobel Prizes, which means her husband and the family. She graduated from uh, a university from Paris, and she worked as a professor 
at the University of Paris, and it was really rare at that time to have a professor, a female professor at the universities. And in 1995, became the first woman to be uh, interned on her own merits in the uh, Phantom in Paris. She was born, in, uh, considered uh, to have her own. She was born um, in uh, Marceau, part of the Russian emperor at that time. في هذاك الوقت تذكروا كان yes اللي هو إمبراطورية تعتبر كانت روسيا. That's right. She studied at uh, Warsaw's Glandstein uh, uh, اللي هي اسمها Floating University. Uh, you must know that her husband was Pierre Curie, and he was also a well-known uh, um, scientist. Yes, also he, uh, she won the Nobel Prize in chemistry too. Yes, physics and chemistry. That's right. Next one we have Patsy Sherman. Um, if you have uh, time, hey, yani she's uh, somehow yani good-looking girl. <laughs> yes, <laughs> so I tried to enlarge the photo for you. And um, I suppose uh, you must know that uh, she was an American chemist also. Um, and um, she had, um, uh, what else? Fi Edith. I want to talk about Edith. Malish Edith Mary Flang. Um, she was one of the um, physicists, well-known physicists in USA. Um, let's hear the video. Growing up in Buffalo, New York, Edith Flanagan knew, even in high school, that chemistry was her calling. We're making something, being creative and putting the materials together to make a new material. After graduating with a master's degree in chemistry from Syracuse University, she found work at Union Carbide in Tonawanda, New York. It had an unusual, exciting, inventive, creative atmosphere. There were chemists, there were physicists, there were chemical engineers, there were mechanical engineers. And we interacted a great deal. It was a very, very strong, uh, held together community. That kind of cooperative working environment is what Edie Flanagan fosters. Always ready to share credit, she believes that the best ideas grow out of collaboration. Each individual is different. And if you can blend that together and synergize their interaction, I think that's the way you get the best results. It was at Union Carbide that Flanagan's boss presented her team with a surprising challenge. He actually came to us and said, I want you to discover the next generation of electricity materials. And we had never had such a challenge. After months of study and experimenting, Flanagan, along with Stephen Wilson and Brent Locke, made their remarkable discovery, uncovering an entirely new class of zeolites, or molecular sieves. These are crystalline structures that are instrumental as catalysts and adsorbents in certain chemical reactions and separations. They work by selectively ferreting out molecules according to size. All of the chemistry, the uh, applications, take place inside of these porous crystals. Smaller molecules will go through and be adsorbed or taken into this cavity, and larger molecules that are larger than this pore will be excluded. Before her research, all molecular sieves contained aluminum, silicon, and oxygen. But Flanagan chose to examine other elements from the periodic table. The result? A new generation of substances, each potentially useful in different kinds of chemical reactions. Perhaps even more significant, Flanagan also developed the processes to make an existing molecular sieve called Zeolite Y, used to make gasoline and jet fuel commercially feasible. To go from the discovery of a new material to scale it up into a reasonable quantity and to determine the properties and to determine the applicability and applications and then to commercialize the application is a big stretch. So I actually worked out the process that successfully went from the laboratory into the final manufacture. Flanagan's new generation of molecular sieves are used to make certain types of motor oil, as well as to make ethylene and propylene, key elements in many plastics. But zeolites are transparent to most consumers. They don't know zeolites make gasoline. The zeolite A is now used in all detergents to replace the environmentally suspect phosphate. And in fact, if you have a box of detergent, you see in the label that it says it has silicate in it. But that's a zeolite A. And it can be as high as 40% of the detergent composition. 
In the field of materials science, Edith Flanagan's work is unsurpassed. At a time when few women were making strides in the sciences, Flanagan and her two sisters all worked at Union Carbide as chemists. And her discoveries, that have resulted in more than 100 patents, have revolutionized the world of molecular sieve materials. I think that it's in many ways uh, helped the environment, it's helped the energy situation, it's uh, certainly excited many other materials researchers to build on the uh, new generation that we discovered. In fact, it almost exploded in that area. Even now, at age 75, she still consults for UOP, the joint venture formed to further develop molecular sieve applications and her passion for invention is still as strong as ever. You know, the growth of the United States has largely been based on inventions, and our prosperity has largely been based on inventions, but it's not generally recognized, so it really has to be promoted. Discuss the questions in pairs. Do you know what do we mean, what do we mean by licensure? Yes, so in Arabic, yeah. If you open your uh, this is it is page 40 49 uh, 49 49 we have here those are the glossaries you may need but how you check them you look at the unit if you have unit for uh, unit 5 you just memorize unit 5 fa'anna licensure iza fatahna iza samahtu safha 50 one, 51, you're going to find here licensure or licensure could be, it is a noun, draw a circle, put a circle on it. It's a noun, 51, at the bottom of page 51, please. It is the, engineer, the granting of a license, usually by a state, عادةً الدولة اللي بتعطينا إياه. مزاولة مهنة in Arabic we have it that establish that stab, uh, that enables the holder to practice a profession. Profession it means a job. So if you want to practice your job as an engineer, a lawyer, uh, um, what pharmacist, مثلا, uh, you must have uh, those licensure. Yes, there are there is an example here. Most states recognize licensure from other states. So in Palestine, you have certain licensure. If you travel to, for example, to USA, you must have another exam, comprehensive exam, and you must take uh, the licensure from there. Let's go back to your book, page 18. Well, 17, 17. And we have lesson four. Many engineers are licensed, and we have here an abbreviation, PEs, okay? Here, what? sort of professions, question number two says, what sort of questions or professions, sorry, require licensure in your country? What do you think? Hello, we're going to go through it. But what are the professions in Palestine you can't work unless you have a licensure? Uh, physicians, doctors, engineers, what else? Teachers, no, the, you don't. Hairdresser, okay, uh, yeah. What else? Every no, no. I mean, yeah, yeah. Yes, uh, that's right. It is a license, something like a license. You're correct, Mahmoud. In no, it, uh, we are talking about a license, but I mean, individual person. He can't work by himself. But you, you may any person may work at the supermarket. But, but not the person who's working there. If you want to be a salesperson, it's not important. But I mean the persons themselves. If you want to work there, you must have a license. Driver, maybe taxi drivers. But in general, I believe lawyers, pharmacists, lawyer, pharmacists, Physicians, doctors, dentists, all of them, they must have licensure from the state. And they have this huge exam. And if they pass it, you, they may 
um, practice their profession, but if they, la samhalla, God forbid, if they didn't pass, they have to repeat it. Some of the people they travel abroad, they have other uh, boards or licensure, then they come back. It depends. Okay. Now we have here, read the text. It says, read the text and number the paragraphs in the correct order. Those paragraphs are um, carefully. They're not in the right order. So we are going to reorder them. But we know the first um, paragraph, it is written here. We have one. So please, Miss uh, May, read the first one. It is said in the United States. In the, in the United States, <coughs> engineers wishing to offer their service directly on the uh, to the public have to be licensed. Yeah, so they must, all the engineers in USA, we are talking about United States of America, they must have license. The professional engineer or BE is used for engineers yeah. who are so licensed. So, it means professional engineer. So, if you are professional, you can go to the market and work within the um, within an office or something like that yeah you offer your service to the public you should have li a license or, or yes please many civil elect uh, electrical yeah and civil, mechanical civil, yeah and chemical engineers are licensed uh, are licensed P Lic licensed yes. professional mm. yeah oh. you say p is could be or professional engineers, okay? Yeah, so this is the first paragraph it's supposed to be. We're going to read the paragraphs not in order, then we're going to reorder them again. So, Muhammad, would you read new new engineering graduates? New engineering graduates? Like you, within one year or two years, you're going to be new engineering graduates. Can I start the licensing? Licensing, licensing process. process by taking the examination. So there are number of examinations there in the United States. There are two stages. Please, Muhammad. In two stages. Yeah. The initial fundamental of engineering. It is FE. It's called FE examination. Can you be must taken upon graduate. Graduate. Some of the specializations, you may start having certain examination while you're within your uh, graduation uh, year, for example, graduating year. So it's going to be like that. At the last year for you at the university, you start working on the examination, Lihuwa Ismo, FE, Fundamental Engineering, okay? Yes. Let's go to after having, please, Mah Ahmed. After having acquired relevant work experience, EITS can take the second examination. Yeah. The principles are the end practice of engineering. So you must work for a number of years, it seems, because work experience doesn't come out of nothing. You should work for a number of years. But now we don't know the number. So this paragraph, it should be yani, later. Ah, we're going to find out some information more. Generally, Noor, would you read generally this licensure? Noor, please. Arin. Noor, huh? Oh, okay. Generally. Generally, this licensure requires a degree from, from an engineering program created by the ABET. Yeah, ABET, it means accrediting board for engineering and technology. Yes. Four years of your work. Hey, is that the number of years? Four years of experience. Okay. Yeah. And the successful completion of the state experience. Examination. So you must pass the examination. Okay, Ahmed, you must pass the examination, the state examination, successfully. Yes. Must the states recognize licensure from other states as long as the way in which the the initial initial it means the first letter. So, for example, yes, for example, my name is Nadia Ali. So I say N dot A Ali, then I say Hamad or Salus, whatever, okay? So those are the initials, the first letters. Requirements in several, in several states, they yeah. are also mand mandatory. Mandatory containing 
okay. education requirements for license. Re licensure. For example, you repeat if, you know, if you travel to, let's say, to Canada, uh, you can't work as an engineer, uh, so you must have the examinations there. And even if you have the licensure from Palestine, uh, okay? So, from Jordan, uh, it depends. No, well, I don't know. I can't. I can't talk about engineering, to be honest. But in general, um, each country or state they have their own rules. For example, if you have your licensure, it says like that. From one of the states of the United States, it doesn't mean you may go through all the 45 states there. No. Each state, it has their own rule. It's a, it's a big state, after all. It's, they are not small states. Yeah. This is important. It makes you able to read and um, develop yourself all the time. Can I read? Yes, please, mister. Engineers who pass the first examination are commonly uh, referred as engineers in training. Yeah, EIT, which is engineering in training. EIT, which is the most important part of engineer entrance. Yeah, EI. EI. That's right. So we have a number of paragraphs. They are um, not in, they are chaos, and yani not in an order. I need you to reorder them to make them a full um, essay, OK? Or article. Take two or three minutes, and then we're going to do them together.
This is weird. Okay, let's go through it. خلينا نشوف. Yes, okay. So the first one, كلنا أكيد we are agreed on number one because it's already given. هلا كمان شغلة لازم نعرف إنها one لأنه we have a name in the United States. Find the specific information. Engineers wishing to offer their services directly to the public have to be licensed. The title, هاي كمان منحكي عادين إحنا شام نعطي abbreviations نعطي كلام وبعدين منعطي abbreviation. Professional engineer or PE is used for engineers who are licensed. Many civil, electrical, mechanical, and chemical engineers are licensed PEs or professional engineers. Number two, which one do you think is number two? Main general. Yes, it's so clear because we have generally. Generally, this licensure requires a degree from an engineering program. So it's going to be. This is, where's two? This is number two. Generally, this licensure requires a degree from an engineering program accredited by the ABT, yeah, Mr. Anas, Lihia Accrediting Board for Engineering and Technology. It's good to know all the abbreviations. Uh, four years of relevant work experience and the successful completion of a state examination. So we have two points, we're going to talk about them, experience and examination. In the next paragraph, it should talk about two things. The Bitelli Sarfian coming to two ideas, work experience and examination, okay? So in the next paragraph, you should have something about this in order to connect it together. So what do we have? New engineering, that's right. New engineering graduates can start the licen licensing process by taking the examination. Shaifin, hai hakin an examination. Yani all the, let's say, all the paragraphs should be connected. Akhir shi kan examination, fabitali am nikan examination, in order to connect them together. Examination in two stages the initial fundamental of an engineering, FE. Examination can be taken upon graduating. Which one is going to be four? Yes, that's right, because this is upon graduating. Engineers who pass their first examination, logically, there is an order, uh, are commonly referred to as engineers in training, EIT or in, uh, engineer. Uh, interns, EI. Okay, next, which one do you think? Number five. After, after having acquired relevant work experience, so we finished talking about the examination, we went through work experience. order. It seems no order there, but there is an order because um, number five, after having acquired relevant work experience, EITs can take the second examination, the principles and practice of engineering. And the last one, it is so general, most states recognize licensure from other states as long as the way in which the initial license was obtained, obtained, I need you to know the word, obtained, have, okay, and meets and exceeds, to exceed their own licensure requirements in several states. There are also mandatory continuing, mandatory education requires requirements for re-licensure, okay? So you don't stop till there. You must improve yourself, you must read more and be better and better, okay. Now let's go to the next exercise. It talks about re, uh, true or false, read the complete uh, order text, then read the statements and circle, true or false. Discuss it with your partner.
Yalla. Let's go through them, Ya Zaid. Let's go through them. Uh, Bara, would you do the first, please? Okay. Read it. The first engineer's exam are called fundamentals of engineering. True. It's true. Yes, okay. Please, Muhammad, number two. By law, all engineers in the USA have to, to be licensed. Licensed? Um, yeah, he mentioned some of the uh, of the uh, specializations. Please, Mace. Three engineers who passed the second stage of exams are no, uh, known uh, as EITS. False. It's false. 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 Yes, yes, the first stage. Number four, Mahmoud. Ahmed, Azdi. Licensed engineers are referred to as EES. This is professional, right? لا لا شرعي. لايسنس انجينيرز اللي معهم انجينيرز معهم يعني رخصة أيوة مزاولة مهنة are referred to as professional engineers هم professional engineers مختلفين they can give service يعني offer service to the public صح ولا لا؟ you're the same خالد. to be licensed engineers have to have four years of relevant experience. yeah. true. it's true. So I suppose you must know those. هلا عادة هم مش راح يجيبوا لكم true or false from those. بيجيب لك passage زي ما كان comprehension وعليها true or false. But you should know most of the information here. يعني بمعنى آخر ال vocabulary المرأة معنا they يعني you could have it. نرجع لها لنفترض ك يعني ك vocabulary قد يكون استخدام for example fill in space. هدول الفيل إن سبيس بدل ما أنا أجيب من عندي الجملة I use it like that fundamental مثلا fundamental what هنا كانت fundamental engineering يا fundamentals of engineering لنفترض examination إيش بعمل أنا بحط لكم between brackets and you correct it وبتضبطوها مثلا حط fundament fundamental you use the adjective something like that so you read it with attention you keep lots of attention when you read those passages but they are not going to bring some questions and you must remember what's the answer. No, it's not going to be like that. Yeah. Let's go to the next page, please. The register of the previous text is quite formal. In pairs, look carefully at the two sentences in the chart and discuss any differences between them. So we're going to talk about just the examples here in front of you. We have formal register and we have informal register. With the formal register, usually we use complex words, we, uh, complex uh, structure. We use, um, uh, let's say, bookish English more. But with the informal, you use everyday English. So we have here the initial fundamentals of engineering. And you should pay attention that we have fundamentals of engineering. It is capitalized, OK, because it is going to be an abbreviation after it then examination can be taken upon graduating. And it's good to know taken upon graduating through your graduation um, year, graduating year or something like that. While the informal, it could be like that, you can take the first exam, the FE, which means fundamental of engineering. They don't mention fundamental of engineering because you should know it is fundamental of engineering right after you graduate. Alatul, after you graduate, this is the informal, this is the simple way to say it. But it is nice to say, taken upon graduating. Once at the graduating year, you graduate and you immediately have the exam. So uh, it is, maybe this is sim more simple for you. And this is, as we said before, it is bookish, bookish English. Yes, bookish. What you write, when you write is different from what you say in general. So select two other sentences from the text and rewrite them in a more informal registration. I'm going to bring one or two examples for you and that's it. And you don't have to go through the whole text and talk about it. Because um في كل الشعب نفس الشيء فما بدي أعطيكم أنا أمثلة والشعب الثاني يتأخذ أمثلة مختلفة منكون اجتمعنا اتفقنا إيش الأمثلة المناسبة لكم and we're going to go through it so let's go to the next in pairs we'll like role play a conversation role play هي عبارة عن to improve your communication skills 
ان جنرال من رول بلاي رول بلاي يلعب دور هو رول بمعنى دور بلاي رول بلاي مثل مسرحيه كذا بسموه رول بلاي ف ات ذا ايم هو الهدف من الرول بلاي از تو امبروف يور كوميونيكيشن سكيلز امبرز رول بلاي كونفرزيشن ويتش ان اكسبيرت ف ون اوف يو از جوينج تو بي ان اكسبيرت اكسبلينز لايسنشر بروسيجرز يو شود نو ذس وورد لايسنشر بروسيجرز وير از ذا سمارت Starboard. Okay. Where is it? Uh, licensure procedures. It's good to know them. Yeah. Uh, social uh, special terms, abbreviations. You should know the abbreviations, and acronyms. It's like abbreviation, etc. To a lay person, you keep this word in mind. Lay person. Okay. Yeah. Or a non-expert. Lay person. It means non-expert. So if you have it. As the exam as synonym, you may have layperson or non-expert. They are synonyms or opposites. Layperson, expert, they are opposites. Yeah. No. So keep that in mind. We have engineers who are licensed are called professional engineers. If you have P, you should know it is professional engineers. You must memorize it. Hey, let them know how they are as engineers. We may come into Mohandisian. In small groups, compare and discuss formal requirements. You know the word requirements in your own professional fields, and discuss how you would explain these to a lay person, just to know it. This is important. Complete the text with the correct abstract noun from the box. We have five words: development. We have independence. We have Knowledge, management, and supervision. Supervision mean supervise. Yes, supervision. Shraf bitkun. This is the noun. Supervise is the verb. Supervision. It's the noun. So we have five spaces. We're going to do it, and then we're going to go. Yeah.
inshallah. I suppose let's start with um, the next uh, exercise in Lihuwa H. Complete the text with the correct abstract noun from the box. Khaled, please, number one. New engineering uh, graduates normally work under the... Uh, uh, yeah, supervision. Supervision, supervision of, is very important of, uh, one. Experienced engineers. engineers. So you are, if you are fresh, usually you're under supervision, under uh, um, supervision of someone who is expert, then you become an expert and you go on. Thank you. Thank you, Khaled. Please, May. In large companies, they may also receive formal classroom or seminar type training. Yeah, seminar type training, it's good to keep it in mind. Seminar, it's like a conference or a group of people working together. Seminar is a very small conference, something like that. Seminar type training. It's like a workshop, could be. Yes? As they gain knowledge and experiences. Yeah, knowledge gain. You gain experience and you gain knowledge. So keep in mind that we have gain. <coughs> Where is it gain? Here we have gain with um, two knowledge and also experience. Yeah, you gain experience. You gain weight. Yes. Uh, this is hard. Okay. Yes. Mm, let's continue with Bara. New engineers. New engineering ascent. Uh, yeah, involved. assigned to. Malish, keep it in mind. Keep it in mind. You have it's assigned, assigned to. Um, no, assigned here, they are hired to be employees. Assigned to more difficult projects. To more difficult projects and are uh, given greater development in design. Yes, yeah, so next one, it's going to be greater um, three. This is a three. Development in design. Yeah, design management. <coughs> so we have four here. And keep it in mind, we have design management. Design management. We have... Um, greater... Okay. Uh, who's going to continue? Please, Mace. And this is making engineers may uh, advance, advance to become technical uh, civilization or uh, to civilize Specialists. Models. It's good to know. Expert, methalan. Either is a synonym, it's going to be specialist. <laughs> yeah. Specialist. Supervise, here's the verb. Supervise. Supervision, supervise. A staff. A staff or team of engineers. And technicians. Technicians, yes, and technicians. Some eventually go into engineers. Independence or enter other yeah, so uh, so Number five. And it's going uh, at the end. Yeah. Eventually, at the end. Oh. Finally, we have finally, eventually, uh, go into engineers, <coughs> independence, or enter other marginal. Finally, oh. Yes. Um, I suppose we're going to stop till here. Next time, just pay attention to the next exercise and can abali ninhil safha, but we must discuss it more. You should pay attention to the noun, to the verb, to the adjective of the of those five words. Okay. Uh, wish you the best. Wish you good luck in your coming exam, inshallah, and see you on Wednesday. Have a nice day. Goodbye.